Hello and welcome to episode 41 of Missile Industries Ford Falcon 351 Crusty Wagon Project. Now this episode is going to be about the saga I went through to get my front seat reupholstered. Hello and welcome to episode 34 of Missile Industries Ford Falcon Crusty Wagon Project. Now this is going to be about new things, predominantly about getting my front seat repaired, so if things go well and this video is posted on the 28th of July like I hope it will be, I'll have a repaired seat to go in the front of my car that will pass a roadworthy. The seat has to go to the upholsterer hopefully tomorrow and after that I just have to wait patiently for my seat to come back and then I can stick it in the car and the majority of the upholstery will be taken care of at that point because the front seat is pretty flogged out and once it gets repaired that'll be that. I can throw a cover over the back seat if it's really that necessary because it only has one split in the vinyl and um, that'll be good to go. Enough faffing around, i will get this done before I run out of sunlight today. It's Sunday afternoon and this thing needs to be in the tray of my ute tomorrow morning by 7. So. I get an immediate stuck into it. Now I've just got a phone call from the upholsterer and it's 20 past or 20 to 8 on a Saturday morning which of course was a surprise out of the blue. I was sitting down for my morning coffee and the phone rang and the upholsterer guy said your seat's ready but brace yourself it's taken a lot of work to get it to this point and I said oh how much is the bill then and he said I suggest you come down and we'll have a talk. So it sounds like it's going to be bad news in terms of the cost. I was quoted about $1,000 to do the work in the first place, taking into account that the uh, frame was busted, the springs broken, and the whole thing needed retrimming anyway. So I'll be curious to know how much worse than $1,000 it's going to be. I've already told him I'll be paying with cash. So there might be some wriggle room in the price, but it's going to be a case of going and seeing it and then uh, going from there, the guy didn't want to give me a quote over the price over the phone because I'm sure at this point he's quite concerned that I'll just run away and not come claim my seat. But I need a seat. I need a seat for my toy. And he's probably done this often enough to know certain people will pay, not any price, but they'll pay a premium for work that's acceptable once they look at it. Now I've seen the uh, re-trimmed results and the seat will probably look quite good. So let's go see this guy and I will tell you I'll update you when I get back with my seat of the cost and the state of it <laughs> So, there's some 
additional seat frame repair that needs to be done and he said this track is actually broken so if you could repair that we'll put the seat back together for you and I said yes no worries I can definitely repair that welding a seat frame will be child's play compared to all the body work I've had to do since I got the car so he said we're open till 12 if you could come back with that welded seat frame we'll put the seat back together for you and I said no problem I will get onto that right away as for the cost of it it has blown out to $1,500 which is not the end of the world as far as I'm concerned because I was quoted a thousand and the guy that built the frame has just walked me through what the extra stuff he had to do to make it all work over and above what they initially thought they'd be up for and he's actually added extra springs in put extra framing in across the entire underside and added I think two more springs into the rear seat squab to make it all work so the guy said he had about six hours of extra labor in it just getting the seat frame ready to be reassembled and they've basically gone you weld this runner and we'll put all the seat back together for you and then you can take it home and he said but you've got to be back here before 12 because we, we shut up shop at 12 o'clock and I said I will get right onto that I will get right onto that right away because I'd like my seat back and $1,500 is no concern of mine as long as I have my seat back and you can tell they both visibly relaxed when they realized I wasn't going to make a big song and dance about an extra 500 bucks and I'm not because in the grand scheme of things that's no big deal getting this project with a seat that actually works that's the factory original seat is the goal all along here so it's blown out by a little bit but the cost of the seat was already going to blow my budget anyway as I detailed in other episodes so let's just get this frame welded get the seat back to them and they'll put it back together for me and then I will take my seat home so I'm back at home now and what I'm going to do is figure out the best way to set this up so that I can give it a bit of a weld and a tidy up and uh, hopefully not cock this up and um, then I can move on to figuring out what bolts to replace these ones that I cut to get the seat back into the car because I did cut these short because they were folded over like that because obviously this car is been to hell and back multiple times over with 347,000 bush kilometers on it so everything's a bit battered and bent and the seat and the frame didn't escape the abuse at all and the reason the uh, price of the seat has gone up higher than the initial quote is because of all the extra damage they found in the frame when they pulled it apart so no biggie I just need to give this a bit of a weld up and, um, Get on to the next phase. probably do. I'll just smash some weld over that, grind it up and um, go back to the shop.
paint on that and then uh, wait for that to dry and then take it back to the shop so they can reassemble my seat. And if it breaks again, I will just fix it myself because because this is my fault. If it break this, if this just breaks, eh, that's that's a me problem, not a them problem. Ta-da! Here is the seat, all repaired. I ended up doing quite a bit of work to the bottom seat squab. Multiple extra springs were installed, lots of cross bracing installed, and lots of reinforcing of the frame around this bit here, which was buggered in more ways than uh, we could initially tell. So it's all been rebuilt and redone. All that remains now is for me to replace the bolts that I had to cut to get the seat out because they're now they're this too much this much too short to bolt back into the car. So I have ordered a pair of bolts on eBay. It'll probably take two weeks to get here. But for the time being I'm going to see what I can smash into the frames or into the seat runners for the time being so I can throw the seat in the car when I'm ready to uh, put the seat back in because I'm still doing the dash which is what you're probably going to see before this ever airs but here it is, here's the seat it was indeed $1500 and as you can see all of this has been replaced I imagine because this was all stuffed and this was uh, not stuffed. I couldn't just let it go with that panel being a different colour to that panel, so they went and did the whole lot. I mean, I did say I just want it to be fixed, but people work to a certain standard, and they probably didn't want to let it go unless it actually looked decent. So here it is. This panel looks like it's been replaced. And this panel's been replaced. That panel's been replaced. All the springs are fixed. Everything underneath here was new, and it certainly looks that way flip the seat over and show you. Here is where all the action is. All this stuff. I think he said he pulled the springs from the passenger side and put them into the driver's side and then reinforced the replacement springs with extra springs for some reason. I don't upholster seats, I've never tried it, I don't have any idea what the ins and outs are, but all of that framework up under there had to be redone because it was stuffed. Look at all the new. Hopefully it's good for another 50 years or even 20 years. So it's mid-afternoon on Sunday and uh, I've straightened out these bolts but they're still a little bit short so Despite ordering some replacements on eBay, I've grown impatient and I've raided my stash of BMW bolts and literally the first box of random bolts I picked up had exactly what I would need to get these on the seat and through the floor so I can bolt the uh, seats back in even though they're metric, but that's fine. So if we do a comparison, there is enough, le enough length there me to get away with this and bung these seats back in. Really the only thing I'm going to do is clear those threads out because the hex head might not be as cooperative as the square head inside that seat frame so I'll clean the threads out to make sure that these nuts glide right on without turning the hex head in the seat frame. Now I'm going to have to pull that seat frame apart just a little bit so I can slide these bolts in to the back but once those are in, I will bung the seat frame and seat back into the car and um, that'll be that for this episode. So the seat will go back in and my interior will once again be mostly complete. Alright, my metric bolts are in 
wasn't too difficult to take those sliders off and install those bolts. Now I just need to give the car a quick vacuum out and then I'm going to try and single handedly stuff this seat back into the wagon because I dislike asking for help. Moment of truth, this seat into this car single handedly. I've actually put the uh, bolts on the bottom of the thread so I don't drag the carpet out of the floor when I skull drag it through the passenger side door. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> Success, the seat is in. Haven't put the belts in yet, there's no hurry to do that. Let me just savour that uh, creamy expanse of tan vinyl for the time being and uh, just enjoy it. Summary time for episode 41 for Miscellan Trees Ford Falcon Krusty Wagon Project. Seat is back. It's taken a number of months and it's gone 50% over budget. But never mind about all that, the whole project so far is probably going to go 50% over budget. And as far as projects go, a 50% budget blowout isn't the end of the world. I'm just glad to have my seat back just in time for me to button up anything, everything under the dash and potentially get this car on the ground so I can reverse it out of the garage in the next episode or two. I actually plan to paint that bonnet next 
So you can hold me to that next episode, some other lame diversion. But the goal is now to whip that bonnet off and uh, get it into top coat so I can put it back on the car, reverse the car out of the driveway, onto the driveway, do a bit of a walk around and admire it in the uh, warm spring light. I wonder why it's turned purple. Did I not rinse that thoroughly enough?